Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This video is a tutorial on Physics Paper 2, Variant 2 from October-November 2023 examinations. Question 1. Which quantity is a scalar quantity? Make sure you're familiar with scalar versus vector quantity. Scalar quantity have only magnitude whereas vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. You can take a screenshot of this table. A scalar quantity here would be time, so the answer is C. Question 2. A student measures the average speed of a cyclist in a race. Which quantities must she measure? To calculate average speed, you're going to need total distance traveled divided by total time taken. So the answer here would be C. Question 3. The diagram shows a series of images of a moving object taken at regular intervals. The object is moving from left to right. Which statement describes the motion of the object? We can see that the distance of each interval is the same, meaning that the motion over here must be at a constant speed. Whereas after a certain period of time, we can see that the intervals is increasing at distance. So this here shows that the object is accelerating. So the answer here is C. The object travels at a constant speed and then it accelerates. Question 4. A plastic ball has a mass of 4 grams and a volume of 20 cm cube. There is a crack in the ball's surface. The ball is placed in a bath of water. Water leaks into the ball without changing the volume of the ball and eventually the ball sinks. The density of water is 1 gram. Which mass of water has entered the ball when the top of the ball is first level with the water surface? Okay, let's first try to understand the question. Initially, this was the position of the ball and then we had a crack in the ball and a certain amount of water has entered into the ball. And when the water entered into the ball, it began to sink. So we're looking to find the mass of water that has entered into the ball when the top of the ball is at the surface of the water, so at this level over here. In order to do that, let's first find out the density of the ball, 0.2. We know that the density of the water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. This means that for the ball to be in this level, its density must also be at 1 gram centimeter cube, which is equal to the density of the water. It has already been mentioned to us that it doesn't change the volume of the ball. So the volume of the ball here remains to be 20. Now we can find the new mass of the ball for this position, which rearrange will give us 20 grams. So this means that the mass of the ball plus with water is 20 grams. So mass of water that has entered the ball would be 20 grams minus initial mass of the ball and you will get 16 grams. The answer is B. Question 5. A satellite orbits the Earth at constant speed in a circular orbit. Which statement is correct? A. The resultant force on the satellite is zero. Okay, when an object is moving in a circular motion, this means that there is some sort of centripetal force that is causing it to move in a circle instead of heading straight like this. So remember that for a circular motion scenario, the centripetal force here would be the resultant force. So the resultant force on the satellite is towards the Earth. The answer is B. Question 6. The diagram shows four identical objects. Each object is acted on by only the forces shown. Which diagram shows an object is equilibrium. For an object to be equilibrium, the resultant force must be equal to zero. This means that the forces acting on opposite direction must be equal to each other. The total force acting on the upward direction is 20 and at the bottom is 20. Even though the magnitude is equal, the direction is not equal. The 20 force is placed favoring towards the right side of this object. So this can be in equilibrium. For option B, the force upwards is greater than the force downwards. So this is also not in equilibrium. For C, the forces on left and right is equal but then at the top is not. And for D, you've got 20 at the top and 20 at the bottom. And the direction is also in equilibrium. So the answer here would be D. Question 7. A resultant force accelerates a car of mass M along a straight horizontal road from rest to a speed V in time T, giving it momentum P. Which pair of relationships for this situation is correct? Okay, so this question is related to momentum and resultant force. Let's first write down the formula related to this. 
Momentum is mass times velocity and resultant force is mass times acceleration or or force can also be defined as the change of momentum per unit time. The change of momentum will be mv minus mu and per unit time t. So let's find out which of these options is correct by rearranging the formula. P equals to mv, only option B and C shows that. So to find force, it is momentum over time. So this is wrong. If I rearrange momentum over time, I can bring t to this side and it will be ft equals to momentum. So the answer is C. Question 8. The diagram shows a part of roller coaster ride with the car at different positions. The car runs freely down from position X over here to position Y over here and up the hill on the other side. What happens to the energy in the kinetic store and the gravitational potential store of the car as it moves from position X to position Y? Position X is above the ground. This means that it has the highest gravitational potential energy and as it goes down the hill, at this position it will have the highest kinetic energy and the lowest gravitational potential energy. So the energy in the kinetic store from X to Y, from X to Y has increased. So the answer is either C or D. And the energy in gravitational potential store from X to Y at x it was the highest and at y it was the lowest. So the answer is decreases giving us c. Question 9. A box is initially at rest at the top of a rough slope. The box slides down the slope. The weight of the box is 20 newtons. The slope is 4 meters long and 2 meter high. The box does 10 joules of work against friction as it slides down the slope. What is the speed of the box as it reaches the bottom of the slope? Alright, first let's list down all the information that we have from this question. Initially, at rest meaning that the value of u is equal to 0. The weight of the box is 20 newton, meaning that w equals to m times g equals to 20 newtons. The slope is 4 meter long and 2 meter high. The box does 10 joules of work. So the value of work, which can also be defined as force times distance or the change of energy, is 10 joules. And we are looking to find the speed of the box. So what is the value of V? In order to do this, we need to find which formula to use. So let's see which formula related to V can we apply for this question. There are few formulas related to E. Acceleration equals to velocity minus initial velocity over time. And another formula related to velocity is calculating kinetic energy which is half mv square. Okay, there is no time given in this question, so we can't use this formula. Meaning that to obtain the value of v, we are going to apply the formula of kinetic energy. We have been given that work equals to 10 joules and we know that work is the change of energy. So the change of energy is the work done, which is 10 joules. So initially, the box was over here, meaning that it has a certain amount of gravitational potential energy. And as it moves down the slope, it has kinetic energy and 10 joules of work done against friction. That means over here like this, 10 joules of friction is applied as it slides down, meaning that the gravitational potential energy over here is equal to the total of kinetic energy and work done against friction. The formula to calculate gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity times height equal to kinetic energy 1 over mv square plus with the work done which is 10 joules. So we know that the value of mg is 20 and the value of the height is 2 meters equal to 1 over 2 the value of m, if m times g is 20, then m is equals to 20 over 9.8, the value of g. So I will put 20 over 9.8 here, v square plus 10 joule. Rearranging this formula, I will get something like this, and then the square bringing it to this side, I will get the value of v equals to 5.422. So the answer is a. That was a lot of working just for one mark. Question 10. An electric car is charged overnight in 8 hours. 180 megajoules of energy is transferred. What is the power of the car charger? Okay, this is a very direct question. We are going to look for the power and the formula to calculate power 
is energy times time. Formulas are very important when it comes to physics, so make sure you have memorized them before your exams. The energy here is 180 megajoules, and you have to convert this into joule. Mega is times 10 to the power of 6. And the time is also given, which is in hours. You have to convert this into seconds. And that would be 8 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. You can put all these values into your calculator and you will get a value of 6300. And the unit for power is watts. And if I convert it into kilowatts, I would get 6.3. So the answer is A. Question 11. An object is at a depth h below the surface of a liquid. The pressure due to the liquid at this depth is p. The gravitational field strength is g. What is the density rho of the liquid? Okay, so this is quite simple. We just need to rearrange the formula of pressure in liquid. Pressure due to liquid formula is the height of the object below the surface of the liquid times the density of the liquid times gravitational potential energy. And we want to find what is rho. We'll just rearrange this, bringing it to the other side. I would get the pressure of liquid, which is P, over H times G. So the answer here is D. From here onwards is questions from Chapter 2, Thermal Physics. Question 12. Brownian motion is the random motion of particles. In which states of matter is Brownian motion observed? Random motion of particles can only occur in gases and liquid. Solid particles are at its fixed position and it only vibrates at its position. So the answer here is B. Question 13. The volume of a fixed mass of gas is varied. The temperature remains constant. This here is discussing about the Boyle's law. According to Boyle's law, the volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. And the formula of Boyle's law is P1V1 equals to P2V2. So as the volume increases, the pressure will decrease. Option A and B is the graph of pressure versus volume. And the graph is supposed to be looking like this. And none of these are, so the answers are not A or B. And graph C and D is plotted against 1 over volume. If it's plotted against volume, it is inversely proportional. If we inverse the volume, then we will have a directly proportional graph, which is D. Question 14. Liquid evaporates from a beaker. What happens to the temperature of the remaining liquid? And how does this temperature change affect the rate of evaporation? Evaporation is the process of liquid converting into gas molecules. And evaporation only happens at the surface of the liquid, whereby the more energetic molecules will escape the surface of the liquid, leaving behind the less energetic particles. Less energetic particles meaning that the motion of the particles is low. If the motion of the particles is low, this means that the temperature of the liquid overall is also low. So as the liquid evaporates, the temperature decreases. The rate of evaporation is affected by three factors, temperature, surface area, and air movement. If the temperature of the liquid is now low, then the rate of evaporation will also decrease. So the answer here is A. Question 15. Thermal energy is supplied to an object of a mass M, which does not change its state during the heating process. The temperature of the object rises by delta T. What is the specific heat capacity of the object? Again, we are being tested on our knowledge on formulas. The formula of thermal energy is mass times specific heat capacity times delta T. And we are looking to find what is the specific heat capacity, C. So rearranging this formula, we will get change of energy divided by mass and delta T. So the answer here is A. Question 16. A room is heated by a radiator. The diagrams X and Y show two possible circulations of hot air which heat the room. Which diagram and reason explain the heating of the room by convection? So the radiator here will release hot air. Now hot air is less dense. Hot air will expand and since it is less dense, it will rise up. In diagram X, it shows that the direction of the air is going up. And over here is going down. 
this means that diagram Y is wrong. And as the hot air rises, it will cool down and become more dense. As it gets more dense, it will be heavier and it will move downwards. And then once it approaches the radiator, it will get hot, it will expand and it will rise up. This is the principle of convection. So diagram X shows that air density decreases when air is heated. This is right because it expands and it gets lighter. So the answer is A. Remember that hot air has low density and it always rises up, whereas cool air has a higher density and it will move down.